Let's take a look at some of the questions and answers that you'll get on the user setup part of the exam. All right. A user receives an error message when attempting to log into Salesforce. What is the first step the Salesforce administrator should take to troubleshoot the problem? All right. So this is just a screenshot of the login. We have four options here. View the login history, unlock the user, change the login IP ranges, and reset the password. Okay. So let's, let's think through these, right? So if someone gets an error message. Our first step is not necessarily to determine whether they're locked or unlocked, right? So they may not be locked. So our first step is not to unlock the user, right? This is, remember, the first step we take. Okay. The second thing is, this may just be a case of a password or something like that. But, so we wouldn't go extreme and change the login IP ranges, right? So we have reset the password and view the login history. Resetting the password may not actually be the issue. It may not be a password issue. So what we need to do is view the login history. So that's the first step that we take when we're troubleshooting the problem, right? And that login history may tell us to take one of these steps, but that's our first step to view the login history. All right, Universal Containers populates the industry field on each account record. The Vice President of Sales would like the industry information on related opportunity records and updated when the value is updated on the account record. How can a system administrator meet this requirement? Okay, so let's break this question down. The company Universal Containers populates the industry field on each account record. All right, so we have an account record, and on that account record, the industry field is being populated. Okay. The Vice President of Sales would like the industry information on related opportunity records and updated when the value is updated on the account record. So in other words, he wants the industry field to update when other records are updated. How can a system administrator meet this requirement? Okay, so we're in an object and we're in the account object right and what we need to do is pull information from another object so there's two objects here and we have to figure out how to do that so create a cross object formula field on the opportunity so we have the opportunity object and the account object so we can create an account workflow with the opportunity field update create a roll up summary field on the opportunity and create a cross object formula field on the account all right so Let's think about this. First things first, creating a roll-up summary field on the opportunity would not update anything on the account record. Okay, you have to make the link between the account and the opportunity object. So C is not going to work. Create an account workflow rule with an opportunity field update. Okay, that's not going to work either. So we're stuck with create a cross object formula field on the opportunity or create a cross object formula field on the account. Now, the vice president wants the record to update on the account record. So what we're going to do is create a cross object formula field on the account, not on the opportunity. If we wanted it to appear on the opportunity, we would create a cross object formula field on the opportunity and not the account. So in this case, D is the correct answer. Which step should a system administrator take to remove an active user from Salesforce? Select one. You can contact Salesforce. This is one of the options to have the record deleted. Overwrite the user record with a new user's information. Deactivate the user record. The system will delete it in 30 days. Or deactivate the user record. What is most plausible from this? So think about this. You have someone who leaves the organization. Would it make sense to call Salesforce to have them deleted? No, it would not. Would you want to take that person's record and overwrite it? Especially if that person was some, someone 
with a lot of information attached to them that could really be useful to you. You wouldn't want someone overwriting. You wouldn't know which information is the original person compared to the overwriter. So B is not correct. C, deactivate the user record. The system will delete it in 30 days. Is this, is this statement correct? Deactivating the record is the correct answer. However, the system will not necessarily delete that record in 30 days. That record will remain in the system. And that means that any accounts attached to that record will also remain, although the person themselves will be deactivated. A user profile has a login restriction set to Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The user logged in at 4.30 p.m. on a Tuesday and it is now 5.01 p.m. Which behavior of the application should the user expect? So this is a login question, right? The user will be able to continue working and start new sessions. The restrictions already say that 5 p.m. is the cutoff time and this person wants to log in at 5.01. So A is not going to work. The user will be logged out and any unsaved work in progress will be lost. The user will be logged out and any unsaved work in progress will be saved. The user will be able to continue working but will be unable to start any new sessions. So, will the user be able to continue working? No, because the restriction is from 8 to 5 and it's now 501. So A and, and D don't work. So let's look at B and C. The question really comes down to will your work be lost or will it be saved? And the answer to this is that you will be logged out and any unsaved work in progress will be saved. Okay, which task can a delegated administrator perform? Choose three. All right, and I'm going to talk you through these. Login as a user who has granted login access. Research passwords for all users. Create new user profiles. Manage users within specific, specified roles. Manage specified custom objects. So, your task as an administrator is to be able to help people log in. And often, people will tell you, I can't see a specific thing, whereas you can see it because you're the administrator. So one of the things that you can do is actually log in as that person and view Salesforce through their profile. Okay, And what you might find is that they are unab unable to see something because of specific permissions. Okay. The second thing that you will often deal with is people being an, unable to access Salesforce or log into Salesforce. So you will be able to manage users within specified roles and manage specified custom objects, right? You, you may or may not be given permission to reset passwords or create new user profiles, okay? So that's the, the trick with this, is that although all administrators can log in, and have access, it might be only specified people who can actually perform the creation of new user profiles and resetting uh, passwords for all users. Okay, which of the following fields can you expect to find on a user's record detail page? So I have a user record over here, and we have system permissions, locale, reports, and role. So let's have a look. We have this person's we have this person's profile. We can already see permissions up here. We can see the locale of the person could be down here. We have the address, right? Reports and role, right? User license. So let's have a look. The locale of the person and the role of the person, okay? You won't necessarily see the permissions or the reports, right? Reports are in a completely different um, object. Okay, wonderful. Locale settings control which of the following? The time zone, number format, or name order. So remember locale, when we talk about where something is. All right, so let's look at that. It's actually all of the above. And that's because the locale really is effect, affects the time zone. All right, so that's important. The locale could also affect the number format. So for example, when you're thinking about the date, that, that has to be in a specific format, and the name order. So depending on where something is, that might affect where it appears in Salesforce. 